Hello, uh, my name's Phil Earl. I'm a writer of a number of books for children and young adults. And I'm here today with Scottish Book Trust uh, to talk to you about inspirations. Uh, the often asked question of writers of where do you get your ideas from? And the answer to that question will vary from writer to writer and it will vary on the sorts of stories that they're trying to tell. For me, I love this idea that we're surrounded by stories. Every single second of our lives, whether we're awake or even when we're asleep. Um, my phone, I'm so guilty of this. This is my best friend in the world. I walk down the street with this and I'm looking at it and I'm texting and Facebooking and tweeting and emailing people. And actually, if we put our phones down for one minute and look around us, we'll actually see that there are stories happening. All we have to do is spot them and, and use them to think about how we can turn the most, even the most mundane little incidents in life into the starting point for a terrific story. Allow the newspaper to inspire you. Where I come from in London, we get two free newspapers every day, one in the morning and one in the evening. And about two and a half years ago, I was getting the bus home when I realised that someone had left one of these free newspapers on the seat next to me. And I picked it up and started to read it and I flicked through until I got towards the middle of the paper where the less important stories are. And there was an article, very small, perhaps 150, 250 words at the most, about a woman who lived in London, was coming up to 60 years old and was a doctor, a GP. And three years before the article was written, she'd lost her husband. Her husband, who'd been an actor all of his life. And she actually found that three years after his death, her grieving for him was getting worse instead of better. She grieved for him every single day. And the thing that made the grieving worse was that she'd started to forget what the sound of his voice was like. Now stop and think about that for a minute. It can sound like the most mundane little detail. But she was starting to forget what it was like to hear him say, did you sleep well? Do you want a cup of tea? I love you. Simple things like that. And the grief of missing his voice was eating her from the inside up. Until one day, she took a phone call from a friend who said, whatever you do tonight, don't go home the normal way. Take a detour across London. You need to go to Embankment Station, and it has to be the northbound platform. And she had no idea what her friend was talking about, but she did it anyway. She took this huge detour across London, went to Embankment Station, northbound platform. She sat on the bench and she waited. And in rumbled a tube train, which came to a stop, and the doors opened, and a voice said to her, this is Embankment Station, please mind the gap. And the voice speaking to her was her husband's. Because unbeknownst to her, 25 years before, he'd done some voice work for London Underground. And they'd never used that sound clip. Apart from that, now that one station, that one platform, had picked up that sound clip and started using it again. And now every day, Monday to Friday, that woman takes a detour across London and she sits on the same bench for half an hour every day. Because every time a tube train comes into the platform and the doors open, it feels like she gets her husband back. It feels like he sat right next to her. And I love that story. I carried that clipping around in my pocket uh, until it dissolved. And I chewed the idea around in my head until now, two and a half years on, I know how I'm going to retell that story. And it's no longer about a 60 year old woman, it's about an 18 year old boy. So he's not married, he's not lost his wife, he's lost his dad. The fact that the details have changed doesn't matter. The human emotion of the story, the potential for great drama from those 150 words is what's important. And I would never have come to that idea if I'd not picked up a free newspaper that someone had left on the bus. I love the idea that front doors can be the inspiration or starting point for you to tell a story. Uh, when you walk home tonight, I want you to look at every front door on the street in which you live, because I can guarantee you behind every single front door, there's at least one story waiting for you to retell. Uh, stories of love, stories of happiness, stories of families coming together or falling apart. Stories about people your age who hold inside them these amazing dreams, these amazing ambitions. The next time your next door neighbour leaves their house, uh, I want you to watch them. Uh, don't do it from the bedroom window with binoculars and a notepad, people generally don't like that. But seriously, watch them. Are they leaving for work one morning in the middle of August and it's 30 degrees outside, yet they're wearing a fur coat that goes all the way down to the floor and they've got the collar turned up? What possible reason could they have for wearing a coat like that in the middle of summer? Or watch them when they leave for work one day, do they leave for work pulling a suitcase behind them that looks like it weighs a ton, only to come back half an hour later and the suitcase is light as a feather? What might have been in the case? You know, was it, was it money? Was it drugs? Was it gold? Was it animals? Was it body parts? You know, what was it? The most stupid, mundane little things that you spot on your street, coming out of a front door, can be the amazing starting point for a story. 
Allow music to inspire you to tell stories. People often say, oh, like, the perfect pop song's three minutes long, that in three minutes you can tell someone's life story. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. Great songwriters are masterful storytellers. People like the Beatles, the Stones, uh, rappers like Eminem, Jesse, they're brilliant at telling stories. There's a little point in filling your head with boy band sort of music. Three minutes of someone wearing new baby baby and you is not gonna tell you a lot about life. But for me, music was a massive inspiration. Uh, when I wrote Heroic, uh, this is a book about brotherhood, about how far you would go to keep someone in your life that you love safe. So every morning before I started to write this book, six months it took me to write the first draft, and every morning before I started to write, I listened to the same song, an obscure album track by Bruce Springsteen called Terry's Song. It's a song that not many people have heard about, and the reason I listened to that song was because the song was about the same themes that the book was about. And by listening to that three and a half minutes of music, it completely focused my mind and reminded me of what I wanted to do in the story.